God's house here this beautiful third Sunday of Easter as we continue to rejoice in our Lord. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And we begin this glorious service this morning as we sing hymn 603, We Know That Christ Is Raised. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made Amen. heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the inequity of my sin. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we continue with our intro. Behold, how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head, running down on the beard, on the beard of Aaron, running down on the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord has commanded the blessing, life forevermore. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Behold how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. O oh God, through the humiliation of your Son, you raised up the fallen world. Grant to your faithful people, rescued from the peril of everlasting death, perpetual gladness and eternal joys. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we continue with our first reading today from the book of Acts, chapter 2. But Peter, 
standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and give ear to my words. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promises for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. And with many other words he bore witness and continued to exhort them, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who received his word were baptized, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our epistle today comes to us from Peter's first letter, chapter 1. And if you call on him as father who judges impartially according to each one's deeds, conduct yourselves with fear throughout the time of your exile, knowing that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. He was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest in the last times for your sake, who through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God, having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, for a sincere brotherly love. Love one another earnestly from a pure heart, since you have been born again, not of all perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and abiding word of God. For all flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers and the flower falls, but the word of the Lord remains forever. And this word is the good news that was preached to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And we continue with our reading from the Holy Gospel. Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. That very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and they were talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What is this conversation that you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, named Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only visitor in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us, they were at the tomb early in the morning, and when they did not find his body, they came back saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. And he said to them, O oh, foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So they drew near to the village to which 
they were going. He acted as if he were going further. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were open, and they recognized him. And he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven and those who were with them gathered together, saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and now he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. And we now confess the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters in Christ, and to our children who are at home with us, uh, my desire this morning for our children's message was to bring a big giant birthday cake, except I couldn't find enough candles for my age. And uh, secondly, I didn't bake a cake. But the greatest day for me for many years of my life was my birthday. Uh, if you ask my wife, it still ranks in the top three. I love celebrating my birthday. I celebrate it all month. Uh, and thankfully, my birthday is on the first of a month, so I get all 30 days. It's a beautiful thing. But really, the greatest day in our lives is, is not our birth. Uh, quite frankly, the greatest day in our lives, much like the day that the disciples had on the road to Emmaus today in our reading had, that is that day that the scriptures are open to us. That means that we hear God's word and we believe, that we understand. That day when we were baptized into Christ and he welcomed us into his family, that is the greatest day because on that day, we no longer look to God with anger. No, we look to God by faith, with love in our heart. And that was the greatest day. And every day we wake up and remember our baptism, we celebrate that great day. Because it is today, the day the Lord has made. So let us rejoice and be glad in it. So let's bow our heads and, and say a prayer to our Heavenly Father at this time. Dear God, we thank you for this great day. Every day since our baptism, when the scriptures were open to us, that we came to believe in Jesus as Lord and Savior. We thank you for that gift, Lord, and we thank you for our children and all children of all ages, your children, God. We thank you, and we thank you for putting it on our hearts that we may go and share this glorious news. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And remember, children at home, when you get back to church, I should have plenty of treats for all of you and maybe some cake, but don't count on that. So we continue now as we sing our hymn of the day, hymn 476, Who Are You Who Walk in Sorrow?
grace, peace, and mercy to you from God our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Boy, what a wonderful reading today. It's, it's one so familiar to all of us. It takes us on that journey, that seven-mile journey from atop Jerusalem down towards Emmaus. And what a beautiful walk it is on this third day after the death of our Lord, after his crucifixion. During the walk, these two disciples of Jesus Christ, we hear are talking about all that has happened concerning Jesus of Nazareth. It's not a coincidence that Jesus comes upon these two disciples and lets them explain what they believe versus what the truth is. He will impart this to him along this journey to Emmaus. We don't know how precisely long the disciples had been with Jesus before his crucifixion, but it's apparent they need a refresher of all the scriptures concerning himself on this day. The disciples and you and I are training to walk with Christ. See, the disciples didn't believe all that had been written. Luke points out for us that they were talking with each other about all these things that had happened. It's, it's almost as if they had this puzzle, but they couldn't put it together. They were missing a major component, the resurrection. And Jesus comes upon them and asks them about their conversation. He knows our Lord and Savior is omniscient. He knows exactly what they're talking about, but he wants to hear it from them. He wants them to share what they believe to be the truth before he can correct them. You see, we, we talk about that in our daily lives today. You know, when we talk about apologetics, when, when we defend our Christian faith, we must first know where those that we're speaking with are coming from, to talk to them, to let them speak to us, and then lovingly we can correct and we can impart upon them the truth, which is exactly what Jesus does. But remember, these are his disciples. They had spent time with him, and he lovingly rebukes someone. He says, oh, foolish ones. And you can kind of get the sense he sets the stage that, okay, you've now spoken. But you misinterpreted. They were slow to believe the scriptures. These were Jews. They knew the scriptures of old. Moses and all the prophets. But they didn't connect the dots to the coming of the Messiah and what he must accomplish through death and his resurrection. You see, ex ignorance is no excuse not to know the law. That's actually something that I'm quite familiar with. Uh, as many of you know, I was a chaplain for the sheriff's department for several years back in Wisconsin and, and was blessed to get to know many officers and, and have friends who are in law enforcement and and one of my friends that I was talking with one day said that very same line to me. Ignorance is no excuse not to know the law. You see, the laws are written, and if we don't read them and believe them, we pay the penalty. Much like Scripture. Except the laws that we break here on earth only have earthly, temporal consequences. They don't have eternal consequences. Now, many of you perhaps don't remember the story or, or perhaps you weren't here when I shared it last, but if you recall, for those who do, right after our Christmas Day service this past year, I had told everyone, man, I'm so excited to get home. I, I sure hope I don't see anything blue and red behind me. And no more than 30 minutes down the road, uh, I got to see some beautiful Christmas lights. They were blue and red. Now, again, ignorance is no excuse for the law. 
I wasn't too concerned, but certainly there was, I can imagine, much like the two disciples on the road to Emmaus, something in their heart was telling them we're missing something. And there's wisdom that's being imparted to us at this time. And so when the officer came up to the window and said, do you know what you've done wrong? Of course, my response was, no, I have no idea. And he said, well, your lights aren't shining. And it was a foggy day. And newer cars, they have the automatic lights. I just assumed. But I didn't read the manual. Had I had read, I would have known that during the daytime, even in fog, you have to automatically turn it onto the on position. And then he would not have pulled me over. But it was the most loving thing in law, just as what Jesus is doing for the disciples on the road to Emmaus is the most loving thing to impart what they're missing. Impart how much his resurrection is part of the Old Testament scriptures. Not just that he would come, not that he would come and die, but he would rise again three days later. That he would rebuild the temple that they destroy, his temple. So this is where I have to ask each of you that difficult question. This is the very same question I have to look in the mirror each day and ask myself. How many of you are reading your scriptures? How many of you know the laws of God and what the penalty is? More importantly, how many of us know what the penalty is on that last day when we are separated from God for all eternity? For those who do not believe in Jesus as Lord and Savior. See, the law is not there to punish us as we think. You see, Jesus came and fulfilled the law. And all we're called to do is believe by faith what the scriptures speak to us. And the Emmaus disciples are on a catechetical walk today with Jesus. That is, they are on an instructional walk of the scriptures. The Emmaus disciples progress from ignorance toward enlightenment. And for the confirmands who are sitting at home watching, for those who aren't quite to confirmation, those who've recently completed their confirmation, the journey's not over. This walk is a walk that we take every day with our Lord, and he's there with us, as he was there with the disciples on the road to Emmaus. We are forever in catechetical training. Jesus takes the conversation and opens their eyes to Moses and all the prophets. That he is the one that scripture is referring to. And he was compassionate in his teachings. And how do we know this? Because they showed compassion to him. You see, the day was drawing near. That is, the evening was coming and to be an individual by himself out on the roads could be very dangerous with thieves and robbers. And there's an illusion that Jesus is continuing his journey. And the two disciples at Emmaus, they call him and invite them in. They welcome him to break bread at the table. They loved him. And yet they still didn't know him. But upon Jesus blessing the meal and breaking the bread, their eyes are open to the scriptures and all that Jesus had imparted to them. They can now bear witness. In my introduction, as I talked about, there's, there's no coincidence that Jesus came upon two disciples on the road to Emmaus because two can bear witness to an event. And so they can speak and support one another's stories. And so after this meal, after their eyes have been opened, 
they rush back that seven miles in the evening time to go and see the disciples, the eleven. And they confirm what Peter had seen. And they confer what each one had heard from Jesus, that he is risen indeed. Alleluia. And so for you and I, brothers and sisters in Christ, Jesus walks with us wherever we may go, whether it be to Emmaus or to the ends of the earth. Our walk began when God gave to us his spirit as a guide on this journey. As we talked with the students earlier this morning, the greatest day in our lives at the waters of holy baptism. And Jesus continues to enlighten us through his living word each day and through his living bread. What a blessing from our Lord that he would keep us and sustain us on this journey. And each day in scripture is a journey reminding us of the eschatological end. That is that last day when Christ returns. When he gathers us all together, not because we were perfect, not because we fulfilled the law perfectly, but because by faith we believed in him as Lord and Savior. And that has been imparted to you and I through his holy word, by the gift of his spirit. What a gracious thing. You know, in the world today, we trust a lot of things, but they don't always get us where we're going. We may trust Google Maps to guide us where we lead, but if you put in the wrong address, you've been there. But it will never impart salvation one for us by the way of the road to the cross. Nothing on this earth will guarantee and lead us and guide us on that road to our Heavenly Father. You see, our journey through Holy Scriptures continues to open our eyes to the truth of Christ, our crucified Lord. Apart from faith, we, like the disciples, would not be able to believe in his death and resurrection. However, today and every day in God's holy word, we are enlightened, catechetically trained, and we can see the road that leads out of Jerusalem from the cross to the glory of God's heavenly kingdom. Each day is a training day as Jesus walks alongside us in preparation for that final day when he brings us home. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. And for those of you here in the Lakefield area, beginning today, because we've heard the calls from many of you and our elders met this past week, we will be receiving offerings at our west entrance under the carport at the conclusion of our service until 10 o'clock this morning. And we will be doing that for the next several Sundays until we're able to return back to the sanctuary. So at this time, we now go to the Lord in prayer. And in our prayers today, we have several of our brothers and sisters in Christ who have been called home to their glory. We pray... Uh, for Fred Henning in the death of his sister, Elaine McDeed. We also lift up in our prayers Armin Dorschner and his family as they've lost his sister, Ruth Letterman, Letterman and also a brother, Ivan Dorschner. So we lift up those families at this time that they may find the peace and comfort knowing that that road and journey has led to God's heavenly kingdom for those who believe. And then we also celebrate today, we celebrate Loretta Palmer turning 80 this coming week. And so if you happen to have a chance and see her, want to reach out to her, wish her a happy 80th birthday. So let us pray. You have heard our pleas for mercy, O Lord, and given up your Son to be our Savior. Hear us now as we come to you on behalf of ourselves and all people according to their needs. 
Our hearts have burned in us, O Lord, as your word has been read and preached. Keep our faith from growing cold and grant us grace that we may not waver in faith or succumb to temptation. Give to us and to our children receptive hearts that we may hear and hearing believe and believing be steadfast in this faith and hope all our days. You have cleansed us, O Lord, with water and the word in baptism, and you have marked us as your own people. Give to us grace that we may live out this faith in holy lives, lifting up your name and word and works for as long as we live. Guide us that with souls purified by obedience to the truth, we may love one another earnestly from a pure heart. Guard, guard our nation, O Lord, that we may enjoy peace and security in the face of threat and danger. Bless our president, the Congress of the United States, and our governor, and all state and local officials, that they may fulfill their offices faithfully. Bless all emergency and medical workers and the members of the armed forces who protect us and teach the nations the ways of peace. Stay with us, O Lord, and be our strength and weakness and our hope in a time of despair. Your gracious will once kept the saints in faith even unto death. Keep us, we pray, with them in your faith and fear, that we may be found faithful when Christ comes again in his glory, to bring to fulfillment all things once and forevermore. Deliver us from all our afflictions, and grant us strength to bear all our burdens. O Lord, hear us with those prayers that are on the hearts and minds today. Lord, we also lift up all those who are locked in nursing homes and assisted living facilities, who have not been able to leave their rooms. Their families crave to spend time with them, and Lord, they desire to be with their family. According to your gracious will, heal the sick, relieve those who suffer, and comfort the grieving and give peace to the dying. Accept, O Lord, the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving we bring for all our goodness and generosity. And with our song, song of praise, accept our tithes and offerings, that your church may have the resources to proclaim your gospel and care for the poor and those in need. These and whatever other things we need, O Lord, we pray you grant to us in the name of and for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ, whose death has made full atonement for our sin, and whose resurrection has granted to us the promise of our own joyful resurrection to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. And taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters in Christ, again, I thank you for, for joining us today on that journey to Emmaus, on that road that leads us to God's heavenly kingdom. And it is in that that I would say, continue to stay in God's word Continue to, to allow him to lead you and guide you and uh, share and impart that with your neighbors, those who may be hurting at this time. 
And so I want to remind those of you who are in Lakefield today, uh, if you have offerings and you would like to bring them by, uh, Phil will be in the back of our, our narthex waiting at the carport from now until 10 o'clock this morning. So go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.